The Andrew Parker story has continued, and I'm sure will continue and continue. And now the um, Reform UK party has, uh, uh, in, in ele has contacted the Electoral Commission, and Adam Richardson claims uh, that he has put in a complaint saying that it was entirely evident that Mr. Parker was a plant within the Channel 4 news piece. Now, the Channel 4 news piece, of course, is not actively made by Channel 4. Channel 4 doesn't do very much of its own material. Almost everything that Channel 4 promotes is something that has been made, rather like the BBC, by a company that is working sometimes completely independently of, sometimes with, the channel that's going to screen the footage. And in this case, Lee Sorrell Media have already got um, a reputation for doing things. They did a, a similar undercover expose of Brexit, of the Brexit Party in 2019. And the, the Lee Sorrell Media is headed by a Barnsley man who had previously worked for ITV and then LWT. And I don't think that somebody with that background is likely to get into the business of trying to dupe the viewer. And I don't think that there's any likelihood that, particularly given the fact that Channel 4 have explicitly said that they had not met this person before or had any de dealings with this person before, uh, that indeed they have connived to distort the footage with some sort of stooge. If there's any stooge, it's something that he's done himself. And uh, he, he was quite clear in the programme. Uh, he was clearly asked for, his, uh, for, for some comments afterwards and there's a quotation after his appearance in the programme saying that he regrets what he said and ha and uh, tries to distance himself from the Reform UK party and saying that he doesn't wish to bring uh, disgrace on the Reform UK party. Well, of course, that's not, that's not necessarily within his gift. I think they do it themselves. We saw on the programme how he was randomly assigned or how the um, the undercover cameraman was randomly assigned to a group. What I don't know and what isn't clear from the footage is whether or not that cameraman ac actively had the camera with him or whether um, Andrew Parker was unaware that he was being filmed all the time. It, that, that's not that's not absolutely explicit. Was he playing up for the camera, in other words? And the, I, I go back to the same thing. That, that, that it's more than possible that this man is an actor of some sort, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he's not actively a member also of Reform UK and, uh, and a supporter of Uf Reform UK and indeed of their views. Um... In addition, of course, the fact that he was so vile about the Prime Minister, I, I, I'm i surprised there hasn't been a, a call for his arrest. Um, I would have thought that that's the sort of comment which would provoke at least a, an investigation. Uh, the, 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 the footage of him using this racial slur while canvassing for Reform UK leader Nigel Farage uh, has, of course, produced backlash, condemnation and defence. And the UK, ref uh, the, UK uh, the Reform UK party's response, uh, they they've acted strongly, Adam Richardson's written, uh, and they're saying that Channel 4 has deliberately gone out to harm Reform UK's electoral prospects, and so it's not just it's not just Channel Four that is trying to harm Reform UK. Farage has said that he's not going to do anything on the BBC now because he thinks the BBC was equally out to get him. So uh, having having come at the top of a poll for 
the most airtime generated by a political figure up till now in the elections. I think we'd be very interested to see how much airtime Nigel Farage, once he's boycotted two of the main channels, will be afforded. And that will be fascinating. Maybe he will just sink into obscurity in the last week and sink back into the mud. But uh, Reform UK claims the broadcast for Channel 4 was designed to undermine them during a critical election period. Well, it was designed to expose what is there because the people who were th thrown out of the party today, they're not the only ones. There's plenty of others. And, 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 and there is... There, there, there is a catalogue of these extraordinary things that people are saying as Reform UK candidates. Amid the controversy, there's also allegations against Reform UK overspending in the Clacton constituency, and the issue threatens uh, to overshadow the party's campaign, and therefore this pittance, this this nonsense that there's an actor running around the place who is set up is a very good distraction, but it is a distraction nevertheless. The issue about the party's campaign overspending is a significantly more important issue than whether Andrew Parker, as an actor, as a part-time actor, is indeed um, part of some setup. And by whom? So, you know, even if you were part of some setup, we don't know who uh, who has set that up. And my hunch is that he's not part of a setup because of the uh, chance association between Parker and the Channel 4 cameraman. Parker has himself commented on the situation, suggesting that more information will come to light through media reports. He's hinted at the existence of further details that could potentially clarify his involvement and the circumstances surrounding Channel 4 footage. Uh, I'm sure it's in his interest to be as... Uh, to, 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 to get as much um, mileage out of this story as he possibly can. He says the Channel... For um, program, he says he's glad the party has reported Channel 4 to the Electoral Commission, but declined to say whether the broadcaster had paid him to appear in the footage. It'll all come out in the papers, he says, no me clay. Uh, what'll come out is the truth. Well, I, 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 wait to, I wait to hear what that is. In the meantime, I think it's important to stress this issue of overspend. Because this is a serious offence under electoral law and the penalties can vary depending on the severity and the circumstances of the overspend. And of course, uh, a forensic accountant may well be needed to unscramble the figures. The Electoral Commission can impose fines either on the candidate or on the party responsible for overspending. And the amount of the fine depends on the extent of the overspend and can be substantial now in extreme cases and i think this would be an extreme case because it's been called out so early where overspending significantly affects the fairness of the election a court may declare the election results void and criminal criminal charges um, in the case of deliberate fraud or serious breaches and remember there is that footage of reform uk um, activists giggling about how much they have overspent in this election. Criminal charges could be brought against the individuals involved and possibly even the candidate being promoted. In the past, in 2015, the Conservative Party, in, um, uh, in, in the 2015 general election, the Conservative Party, a year later or so, was fined £70,000 by the electoral Commission for significant failures in reporting expenses related to the 2015 general election and three by-elections um, in 2014. In 2017, 
in the general election, there were allegations against the Labour Party concern, concerning uh, campaign spending. However, no significant penalties were imposed following investigations by the Electoral Commission. But Craig McKinley, in the 2015 general election, faced charges relating to allegations of overspending um, in his campaign, and guess who his campaign was against? His campaign was against Nigel Farage in South Thanet. But he was ultimately cleared of wrongdoing in 2018. So this whisper of suspicious activity dogs Farage and the campaigns that Farage runs. I know this because I observed similar dodgy goings on uh, in 2015 and 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 I thought I thought it was worth flagging up which I did which I did and I I I don't know whether these were um simply my anxiety or or or, or, or whether there were real concerns um but they certainly didn't they certainly didn't affect the outcome of the election because the UKIP candidates failed to get anywhere. I think had they been more successful, then there would have been um, a serious opportunity for those cases for those cases to be made. I think this is the wrong way to deal with complaints. I think complaints should be looked at whether a candidate is successful or not successful. Um, certainly, I think pooling the resources of, of two or three different constituencies to use in one particular constituency, um, th this, this cannot be right. And I think the, th there must be questions asked about the Conservatives' current plans to pool candidates and activists from other constituencies to... Uh, canvas and to work together in the constituencies which are now under threat with slightly larger majorities. I think that also sounds a little irregular, but you know, it may be entirely legal. And we get back to the same thing that we've had so many times in the past. Something may be entirely legal, but it's not necessarily honest or morally right. It may be legal, it's not necessarily ethical. And that's where future governments come in and that's where there, there must be a call on the incoming Labour government to look at the legitimacy and the issues surrounding the uh, uh, election spending. I think also uh, I, I understand um, that... Labour is now committed to setting up a COVID corruption commission um, or COVID corruption commissioner to look into the uh, VIP PPE lane and the corruption that goes along with that and therefore, of course, to the money taken by Baroness Moan. But she is not the only one. She is one of many buddies who were given special opportunities and only a day or so ago there was uh, there were photographs of the huge stockpiling of unused PPE that not only uh, was a gigantic um, stockpile uh, looking like something out of the end frames of Raiders of the Lost Ark but was also badly stockpiled and therefore was completely and utterly useless. It, it, it's not just the, the, the boxes of PPE that should be falling. Um, heads should roll for that sort of um, contempt for the general public and contempt for people who died and were seriously ill during the COVID outbreak.